So at a recent meeting here in Washington State that was conducted over Zoom, the Washington State Secretary of State, who was meeting with local elected auditors from around Washington State, responded to some questions, initially from Skagit County Auditor, about local citizens looking just too closely at their actions in office. And there was a general series of complaints that citizens shouldn't be allowed to look very closely, audit, or really be allowed to shine a light on what government is doing, particularly when it comes to elections. So although my name wasn't brought up by any of the local auditors, Washington State Secretary of State Steve Hobbs called me out by name, and he complained about me, saying that he was checking in some ways to try to sanction or silence me and my efforts to hold government accountable. Now, really, this video is basically a response to Washington State Secretary of State Steve Hobbs, who is far from the first elected official uh, that I have found in the state who has called for silencing, suing, or threatening me for daring to expose their bad behavior, but he is the most recent, and I'll respond to him the best way I know how. Now, before I go into those details, however, I want to remind you that if you like this video, just hit the like button down below. If you don't yet subscribe to our channel, hit the subscribe button down below. Neither step costs you anything, but just a few seconds of your time. And also, due to frequent shadow banning of our content, it really helps if you are willing to share this video with others who may appreciate the content. You can kind of text it, you can email it, you can post it on your favorite social media account, regardless of how you share it. The more who see it, the better off I believe that we will be. Finally, if you like what I do here at We The Governed and you do want to support our efforts, feel free to support us financially, which you can do by clicking on the link down in the video description below. Anything's appreciated and everything helps. So back to Washington State Secretary of State Hobbs. So first, whenever a politician gets my attention like this, which I'll point out uh, wasn't to my face, but behind my back, which is pretty normal for these guys, that always merits a closer look at them, at least to me. And I'll confess, I was actually a pretty big fan of Steve Hobbs back when he was state senator just a few years ago. Hobbs had kind of this unique distinction of being the last Democrat elected to the Washington State Senate capable of doing math, and who actually believed that math was real. So that unique characteristic alone, which is actually a good one, that generated a lot of goodwill from those of us on the other side of the political spectrum, because we appreciated somebody who was in this lefty camp, but who believed that math was real. So Hobbs' kind of semi-principled position at times really did help kill a lot of bad bills in Olympia for many years. And that was when the Democrat majority was really, really slim at the time. And they really needed every vote to pass the particularly crazy stuff. So this is widely viewed as the reason for the Democrats to get Hobbs out of the Senate and then into the state Secretary of State's office where he was initially appointed by Governor Inslee before winning that election just this last year. He wasn't crazy enough for the Democrats to keep in the Senate, and they really did feel that he was incompetent and probably wouldn't last long in the Secretary of State's office. My sources inside the Secretary of State's office tell me that he's actually a terrible manager, despite his math skills, and this is widely recognized as kind of a possible position that could be taken, maybe, by a Republican if we could find a normal, capable Republican out there to run for this office. It's always easier to beat an incumbent if they're not a good manager, or at least that's the theory. So far, the egregious incompetence of the current crop of incumbents in our state has not necessarily borne that theory out. So back to Hobbs and his desire to silence me and sanction or sue me into submission. And while I'm actually disappointed to hear this guy make these statements, he's still a Democrat and silencing dissent and all those who dare question authority is kind of a common theme among the dominant left in our county, in our country, in our state today. There's really nothing that big government hates more than citizens who dare to speak up and question authority. Of course, there are some exceptions to the unapproved dissent that I apparently represent. I mean, these guys don't mind if you want to burn down cities, maybe riot and take over whole blocks of a downtown city, just like Seattle, and then attempt to secede from America. Nope, you didn't hear any critique from these guys when Antifa and BLM did that back in 2020. It was perfectly okay. In fact, they don't mind it when self-described warlords even hand out AR-15s to kids out of the trunk of a Prius, which they apparently did in Seattle and CHOP at that time. It's kind of this law of the zone that was sponsored by the city of Seattle, remember the Summer of Love. Nobody was ever held accountable for that or for the mostly peaceful murders, rapes, and violent assaults that occurred there. Nope, 
Instead, these lefty elected officials will strive very hard to release much more violent criminals more frequently without any consequences back into the streets just as quickly as possible so that they can continue their crime sprees. Because you see, this is good dissent and it's mostly peaceful violence. Now, at the same time, these poli same politicians are going to coordinate with billionaires like Bloomberg, Nick Hanauer, and Soros to take away the ability of law-abiding citizens to defend themselves while they actively, again, support these politicians. They support more violent crime in the city. This is just what they do. There's no consistency or moral compass, just the eternal and timeless quest for power, which pesky citizens like you and I probably who dare to look under the hood of local government and who become understandably disgusted with the corruption and incompetence that we'll soon discover if we do that. Now, while I had some hope that Hobbes was different than the usual crew that we get into public office, it appears that he's just like all the rest. Once in power, they just immediately seek ways to make government less transparent, and they try to find ways to silence all who dare question their actions. Now, like as I've said, Hobbes is far from the first politician who wants to silence me or sanction me or make me go away. Many have publicly stated this desire in the past, and many will probably do so in the future. But while he obviously wants to intimidate or silence all dissent in our state, starting with me apparently, I'll point out that the best way to play defense is to have a good offense. So playing offense means looking closer at these politicians who admit that they want to silence you and I. No honest person has that as a goal. And their dishonesty, usually hard to, it's hard to completely hide from everybody else. So I couldn't remember, frankly, I'd filed so many at the time, I couldn't remember if I'd caught Hobbs breaking our state's campaign finance laws before. I had to go back and check. But uh, mainly because I've caught so many politicians, judges, and others breaking the law over time. And so I went back and I double checked, and it turns out that I did in fact catch Hobbs violating the law here back in 2018 when he failed to properly get permission from his donors to transfer funds from his state Senate campaign to his failed Lieutenant Governor campaign back in 2016. So while the PDC let him go and correct his basically legal deficiency with ba what I call a naughty, naughty letter, um, I also found out that I had caught him a few months later that very same year just failing to properly break down expenditures with the legally required details. This was a legal defect which he did correct after I caught him. So okay, so now I know why he particularly doesn't like me personally and why he wants to silence me and prevent me from looking into his actions or the actions of other elected officials in the state. This certainly invites the deep dive into his background and finding out what else he doesn't want us to know or find. I'm in the process of doing this right now, and I expect my next well-deserved PDC complaint against this guy to be filed very shortly. And I'll let you know what else I find when we look deeper into this guy. Now, while I'm disappointed to see this elected official kind of drift into Bob Ferguson Ministry of Truthland, I'm constantly reminded that elected officials rarely get more honest the longer they stay in office. And their willingness to suppress the truth and silence dissent just seems to be something that grows with them the more power that they get. The key, I believe, and the lesson to be learned here is that you can't let yourself be intimidated by corrupt elected officials, particularly those who want to silence and suppress you. They actually work for us, not the other way around. Now, they often forget this, of course, but we need to remind them of this fact, not just on election day, but all year round. They deserve very close scrutiny and public exposure for their wrongdoing. So in closing, this recent Steve Hobbs drama really provides a good reminder for just a few closing thoughts for this video. Number one, most importantly, just don't be intimidated. Don't let the pomp and tenor of a self-serving insecure politician make you back down or go away if they threaten you like this. It almost always means that they have a lot to hide and it should inspire kind of an exponential increase in both attention and exposure that that politician most likely desperately needs. And number two, politicians and bureaucrats, they actually work for us. They might want to scare us or make us feel like it's the other way around, but we need to remind them regularly that they work for us. And this is best done, of course, by frequently electing different people to office, but it's also done even better by downsizing a bloated bureaucracy, which is basically a story for another day. And then finally, when somebody in power does lash out like this, that's a pretty good indication that they have something significant to hide. Always dig deep, push back, and keep digging until you find out what they're hiding from the public. To do this, you have to show up. Because in the end, the future belongs to those who show up.